Good afternoon, everyone. It's David Schlothauer here, back with another very important detailed tropical weather outlook and discussion for Thursday, August the 29th, 2024. As we do take a look at our latest GOES-16 True Color Visible Satellite Imagery, we do have an area of disturbed weather out here in the middle of the main development region entangled within the western extension of the West African monsoon trough that you see here with all this percolating convection. Here comes another tropical wave coming off of Africa. But it's this area right here that we are most concerned about because this once this breaks free, from the intertropical convergent zone and the West African monsoon, this could develop pretty quickly once it gets into the Caribbean. This is a closer zoomed in view looking at the overall spectacle with this disturbance here. We have westerly flow as you can see here. We have northeasterly flow on the northern side and I've talked about this a few times how the alternating wind currents here could actually spin up something along the intertropical convergence zone. And that seems to be coming to pass in this update where we have some organizing convection. Right now it's fairly uh, disorganized, but we're starting to increase that and lower the pressures here for something to develop. And it looks like it's going to happen where I've circled in orange. Now the reason why I do see this spinning up more efficiently is because of the presence of deep convection over the center and just to the south of it. When we zoom in here much closer from zoomearth.com, link in the description below this video, we can see there's a couple of things going on. Of course, we have the circulation right here. You can see not much cloud movement in the low levels. So that's the low level center. And when we examine the southwestern and western tail of this wave envelope, we can see there is deep convection here, but it goes up and it collapses, leaving behind these arc clouds. So there is a bit of a struggle with this wave with some presence of drier air, and there's even some drier air to the north. You can see another arc cloud developing here, some cloud arcs within this. So this is not a super duper quadruply moist environment, but it is enough to get something started here, and that's why the NHC has um, outlooks on this system. Now, speaking of outlooks, this is a look at the latest seven day graphical tropical weather outlook from the National Hurricane Center in Miami, Florida. And as you see here, there is a 40% chance of tropical development over the next seven days. That's a medium chance, not a low chance anymore. So anyone living on these islands really needs to be monitoring the progress of this system as heavy rainfall, gusty winds, and some flood concerns now could be possible for some of these islands. But it's not only that, once this gets into the Caribbean, does it develop any further, possibly into a tropical storm or even a hurricane? That still remains to be seen right now. And we're really going to only be focusing on these islands. And then towards the end of the video, we'll be focusing on the rest of the Gulf of Mexico and also into the Caribbean and including the Dominican Republic, Jamaica, and Cuba, as this could be headed your direction too. So now the question really remains, how much more will this develop before on the approach to the Windward Islands for Monday night into Tuesday morning? Looking at the latest European model, this is a deterministic forecast, not an ensemble. We'll show you that in a little while. This is a look at that forecast, though, and we can see right now uh, the European model has this approaching Martinique, Dominica, as well as St. Kitts and Nevis, as well as Barbados by Monday night into early, early Tuesday morning of September the 3rd. And even so, this is not a closed circulation. There is going to be a fat side of this system to the north with winds, tropical depression force, 25 to 30 miles an hour. There is even a little bit of a wind max here of winds of about 32 miles an hour. That's pretty strong. That will do some minor damage, trees coming down, that sort of thing with some heavy rainfall. And this passes over those islands by Tuesday morning into Tuesday night. But that's just one model. If we go back and look um, at the other models, we can see this is a look at the ICON model showing uh, a more stronger coherent system. We can see that here by Tuesday morning, September the 3rd. Take note of this uh, wind fetch right here of winds of 30 plus miles an hour. We even have winds of 40 plus miles an hour just to the north of the circulation impacting Dominica. So therefore, tropical storm conditions cannot be ruled out here. And this is a more coherent closed circulation where we have westerly winds on the southern side of the system. 
This includes for Barbados as well, getting some of those wins from the southern, uh, from the south, as you, the system will pass just to your north, just to your north, but not by a whole lot of margin there. And this will be moving into the Caribbean by Tuesday night in a Wednesday morning. A little slower on that model, and we'll be comparing those here in just a second. So um, now if we take a look at the Canadian model, this is an important one. There is a signal here from all three of these models that a system exists here roughly Monday night into early Tuesday morning. And we can see that here on the Canadian showing tropical storm force winds, winds 35 to 40 miles an hour over Dominica, as well as some of these other islands, St. Kitts and Nevis, as well as say Barbados down there with southeasterly winds at around 20 miles an hour. So now as far as the GFS goes, this is a look at the GFS right now. And there is virtually nothing. This is literally about that time frame that we're talking about. Uh, this would be a Monday night, Monday night into Tuesday morning. There's no system here at all. And if we go forward in time into Tuesday morning, there is no system. Versus if we look at the 06Z run from the GFS, had more of a system here, but more broader in nature. So it's really interesting to me that the GFS has not been cooperative as far as initializing its current conditions and then simulating those into the model to give us a better forecast. And the latest forecast here has no signal at all, not even a tropical wave, which is probably an underestimate from the model in itself. So uh, as far as timing, uh, you can see that the Euro, if we go forward here on the surface wind map, you can see that the Euro is faster, the Icon and the Canadian models are a little slower, versus the GFS model is also fairly slow, uh, fast as well. In fact, it's hard to even say where the wave here is because it doesn't even exist. So that's a look at the timing and intensity just for the Windward Islands. Now, how much rainfall is expected over these islands right now the latest european ensemble forecast all 51 members averaging this out to about two to three inches of rainfall over guadalupe dominica martinique and barbados including for puerto rico and the western cuban coast or not cuban coast uh western or eastern uh, dominican coast there we go uh, with rainfall amounts there maybe as much as two to three inches so yeah there's gonna be some weather with this rain wind and some surf as well but now that we got that all out of the way just for the windward islands what about for puerto rico and for residents downstream of this like jamaica a lot of people watching this video from jamaica from the dominican republic and cuba including for the cayman islands grand cayman as well and of course, a lot of you are watching this from the United States, such as Florida and the Gulf Coast, because there is some disagreement, but there is a signal that if this goes further west, some areas like the Gulf or even across the extreme southwestern um, Atlantic coast like Florida could get impacted by this system, including for the Bahamas. So now looking at the Euro here for uh, next week on Wednesday, we can see for September the 4th here, we do again have a, a disc, combi uh, di I can't even get the word straight here. A not, it, the wave is very sharp here, but not closed on the Euro model. But if we look at the previous run from last night, this was a much different situation. This was indicating a tropical storm, if not a hurricane. And even the model before that, really did not do much with the system. So there's a lot of uncertainty here in the forecast on exactly how this is gonna all evolve because maybe if the system does not develop as what models project right now and it develops a little later, then maybe it's not gonna be as strong, right? So it's all about the timing where and when this develops. Once we get a coherent circulation, then the models will do a lot better job and I'm hoping that the GFS will follow suit with that. But the euro here indicating that the system remains fairly weak through the Caribbean, but it does clip Jamaica here with winds of about tropical depression force and then moves into the northwestern Caribbean uh, on approach there to, say, um, the island of youth as a tropical storm. But it wasn't always like that. If we look at the zero Z run, we had a, a formidable hurricane actually clipping Jamaica here and the Haitian Peninsula of the Dominican Republic 
versus uh, the 12s we run now has this further south and weaker. Very interesting to see that change here. But again, there's going to be a lot of wiggle room to be expected because until this develops, we expect that. That's a normal thing with these models. So now, what about the intensity of this forecast, right? So everyone's wondering how strong could this get once it gets into the Caribbean? Will it pull another barrel situation? Could it pull another Ian from a couple of years ago? And so if we look at this uh, closely, uh, we can see over the next five days, this is the upper level tropospheric flow at 200 millibars. So these wind barbs indicate, or these streamer lines indicate our winds uh, in a wind direction and intensity. So we do have outflow um, in all quadrants of the system with this depression or this storm that develops in the Caribbean. And then it remains to be seen how this is going to all interact. Right now, if we look simply at the, um, the European model over the next, say, eight days or so, there is a little bit of a tut cell right here. You can see the winds bending right here. So we have a little bit of a trough or a upper level tropospheric trough. A little bit of a ridge too, helping to encroach that. And there's a little bit of westerly flow hitting at this on the western side. So there is going to be some shear here. Anywhere between maybe 15 to 20 knots. Is that going to prevent development? Probably not though. There will be some development with this. But it could prevent this from becoming uh, any stronger. Such as maybe a hurricane or a major hurricane or so. So the background state here in the Caribbean remains a little bit murky at the moment. Because again on the timing of our system developing. But once it gets into the Northwestern Caribbean though, there could be a little bit more shear as the system gets imparted on the, the, uh, the Northwestern side of this uh, barotropic 200 millibar ridge with Southwesterly flow a lot. Now, another tool that I wanna show you all is the European Ensemble Track Forecast. So this is 51 different ranges of possibilities here. So it's another way of kind of giving us an idea what may happen, what is the best case scenario, or what is the worst case scenario. So these are uh, this is a very important ensemble forecast. The GEFS ensemble is not doing very good on this system, and we'll just use the European. So we can see here over the next couple of days, there is our system right here on the right image, and here are the Windward Islands. As we go forward in time, we can see that the system does approach in the next four to five days. Now, some members are a little slower here. You can see the deviation. So essentially, the further north this goes, the faster it's going to move because the gradient, the ridge up here to the north is going to influence the system a little bit more versus it being further south. It's not going to be influenced as much by the trade winds and it moves a little slower and may be able to develop a little more sufficiently or efficiently, I should say. Now going out to day five, the system moves over the northeastern Caribbean and then moves over the central northern Caribbean by day six. And we can see some of these members indicating a strong tropical storm or a weak tropical storm. And then by the day seven time frame, we can see where it's at. And you can see the range of possible outcomes here, um, anywhere between the central Caribbean all the way into the southwestern Atlantic. And there are some members here that do explicitly show this becoming a hurricane. So we cannot rule out that out as well. But there's a center of these members that bring this very close dangerously close to Jamaica and into the Cayman Islands uh, by day seven. Then by day eight and then day nine, or wait, yeah, day eight, I'm only going out to day eight on this forecast. You can see here, um, still the same thing, really not much changes. A little bit of a downscale from the uh, other ensemble forecast from last night, and I will show you that here in a, uh, in a split second. But this is today's 12th output on the ensemble from the Euro, showing us our possible outcome. Now, looking at the uh, zero Z from last night, we can see a little bit more aggressive here, but also a little bit more divergent. So still indicating here on this model that this would have been possibly a, a category one hurricane, if not a high end tropical storm and even a high end tropical storm or hurricane just to the north of Puerto Rico. So there is still that level of uncertainty here again until a coherent system developed. If this developed to the north, it would go this way. If it develops to the south, it would 
be moving this way. So where and where this surface low forms will have its launching point different for someone on this forecast. We can see this better too on the European Ensemble SpaghettiO plot here from weathermodel.com. As we go forward here, we can see the range of possible outcomes. Now these darker red colors, these little dots indicate a hurricane. And then the lower numbers or one model here has it at a major hurricane. But the majority of these models do indicate that this would be a strong tropical storm or a low-grade hurricane once it approaches the Central Caribbean. So there is still a lot of details to wrinkle out about this disturbance, but nevertheless, there will be impacts to these islands and you all need to make sure you, you keep your guard on the, or make sure don't let your guard down on this disturbance. Another thing that I really wanted to take a look at is the upper ocean heat content in the Caribbean. So if this wave actually moves into the Caribbean as what most of the models do indicate, this could have a very high ceiling of tropical development because of how high our upper ocean heat content actually is in the eastern, central, and northwestern Caribbean. I mean, some of these dark red colors here are off the charts greater than 225 to even 250 units of upper ocean heat content. And if that's not enough, even the Gulf of Mexico is ready to go and primed for a very explosive tropical storm or hurricane if we get anything that moves into that area under a very favorable environment because of how high the upper ocean heat content actually is. On top of that, sea surface temperatures are in the mid to upper 80s throughout the Caribbean and then in the upper 80s across the Gulf of Mexico. So again, nothing to stop this system from developing at all. It's only the upper level atmosphere that could put a ceiling on this system if it encounters any drier air or any wind shear. But as it stands right now, the sea surface temperatures are very optimal for this system. And when we look at the sea surface temperature anomalies, definitely above average here in the Caribbean and also in the Gulf of Mexico, running at least a degree or two above the climatological average. But anyways, if you found this video very helpful and informative, please consider subscribing right now to the YouTube channel, hitting the bell notification icon, leaving a comment in the section below and hitting the like button if you did enjoy today's video. It really means a lot, folks. Get this out to a lot of your friends and family and parents because we do have people that live on these islands. And again, I will mention those islands one last time here. If you are on, I'm going to circle them in too. All right, so let me zoom out really quickly here. So if you're on Barbados right here, so if you're on Barbados, you need to be watching this system. St. Vincent and the Grenadines, St. Lucia. If you're in Martinique, if you're in Dominica, if you're in Guadeloupe, St. Kitts and Nevis, I meant it's up here. Sorry if I made that wrong in the video when we looked at the models. If you're in Antigua and Barbuda, uh, if you're on St. Oh yeah, we did St. Vincent. And if you're down even here in Grenada, you need to be watching this system closely. All right, my thoughts and prayers go out to all of those that are going to be impacted by this system. Please make sure you stay up to date here on the YouTube channel for latest information. Until next time, I'll be back with you more tomorrow with another detailed update on this disturbance.